Over the last several months, we've been told to self-isolate and socially distance as a way to stay physically healthy. This has an emotional impact on us because as humans, we are hardwired to be with and to touch others. I'm Dr. Amy Williams, and I'm a clinical psychologist and the director at the Cohen Clinic at MetroCare in Dallas, Texas. I'd like to share a little about what happens when we isolate and what to do about it even when you don't feel like it. So a couple of terms um, to start off with. One is social support. Social support are all the psychological and material resources that we get from our social network, which includes our family, friends, and community that help us to cope with stress. Loneliness, another term that we all kind of know what that is, but I'd like to introduce two types of loneliness. One is reactive, which is in response to a move, or it could be in response to loss of a job, or loss of a loved one, or divorce, or COVID-19. The other one is more chronic loneliness, and this is the more problematic one, it's when that stretches out into longer periods of isolation and loneliness. And that, that's the type of loneliness that I'm talking about that will get us into trouble. I'm not talking today about the sometimes really beneficial um, impact of having alone time um, and taking care of yourself in that way. I'm really talking more about the isolation and loneliness side. So there is biology behind this. When we have a lack of social support or we are chronically lonely, our body actually responds to it much like something dangerous, um, that fight or flight type of reaction. That stress response over time can suppress our immune system. And research has actually shown that lacking social support over a period of time is as bad for us as smoking 15 cigarettes a day and twice as bad as obesity. It can lead to things like depression, suicide, alcohol use, cardiovascular problems, and poorer brain functioning. So we're not just talking about something that you're doing for yourself because it seems like you should do it. It really is something for your health. On the flip side, um, there's a hormone called oxytocin that's actually um, sometimes called the love hormone that is present when we're connecting and connecting with others. And that's actually one of the things that um, has even been talked about with physical touch, that we um, can be experiencing touch starvation, being told not to touch and be uh, purposely socially distancing. So if you are asking yourself, you know, am I feeling lonely? Um, am I feeling isolated because somebody told me I had to stay home? Or has this loneliness really kind of crept into a new habit, maybe a little bit of depression? You know, what can you do to fix that? Well, first of all, if you are working outside the home, a lot of times you can look to the team that you're working with and talk to your coworkers on a more deep level um, in terms of their background, their interests, their hobbies, and maybe even doing something like to fulfill a basic need for them because volunteering tends to make us feel good. But if you're not one of those folks, or if when you're home, you're really feeling that isolation or loneliness, it's gonna take a few more active steps potentially to kind of get you back into the mix. So emailing and texting is great as a way to reconnect with people. Sometimes trying to connect with people that you haven't maybe talked to in a while. I'm looking through your contact list and reaching out. You'd be surprised that other people probably are feeling the same way you are. Um, Texting and, and emailing is great, but you're gonna get the better oxytocin bump if you actually hear someone's voice. So a phone call is great, video chat is excellent. Um, I will say that if you're on video chat all day long, you might wanna give your brain a break. Um, it's not natural for us to sit two feet in front of a camera, in front of a face, um, and to um, keep constant eye contact. So that can kind of be fatiguing to your brain. But it is really great um, to, to have that personal experience that you get when you can see someone. And on that note, as maybe some of the social distancing eases, challenging yourself to figure out what's a way that I can implement this back into my life. Another thing to do online are group activities like yoga. Um, and there's always singing, actually singing slow tempo songs um, has been shown also to um, be a mood boost. So turn on those 70s ballads. And last, don't forget about your pets because pets um, also show um, an increase in oxytocin when we are snuggling with our animals and our, our fur babies, if you will. As you think about implementing some of these things, if you've found yourself in a rut and not doing that, I challenge you to think about just one or two things over the next week that you can put on your calendar um, and commit to doing to start to break that cycle that we were forced into initially. And I hope that this has been somewhat helpful for you. If you have found it helpful, I'd encourage you to look at some of the other videos in our series about self-care. Thank you.